Let's read the story, St. Patrick's Day in the Morning, written by Eve Bunting and illustrations by Jan Brett. Here's the dedication page, and this book is dedicated to Debbie and Sloan with love. Jamie wakened early and remembered that it was St. Patrick's Day. He climbed carefully over his big brother Kevin and his big brother Sean. So he's getting out of bed. The stairs were cold on his bare feet. The kitchen was cold too. The fireplace full of dead ashes like chalk. Nell, the sheepdog, lay in the rocker. Here, Nell, Jamie tried to snap his fingers the way Sean did. Nell uncurled herself from the cushions. Jamie sat in the warm spot where she'd slept. St. Patrick's Day in the morning, the green sashes were laid out on the table. The big one was his dad's. The next biggest was Sean's. The next biggest was Kevin's. Their fringes were crusted with gold. There was no sash for Jamie. It's not fair, Nell, said Jamie. I want to walk in the parade too. They say I'm too small, that I couldn't get to the top of Acorn Hill. But what do they know? Jamie slid off the chair. His mother's raincoat hung behind the door. He put it on. He put on his dad's black hat and Sean's sash. He took Kevin's flute from the dresser. Come on, Nell, Jamie said. Outside, the mountains were as green as cat's eyes. Clouds hung in tatters around their tops. Head up, chest out, Jamie said. Follow me. They marched down the street. None of the chimneys was smoking yet. Milk bottles stood in front of steps, waiting to be let in. Kit Kelly's donkey put her head over her gate. A happy St. Pat's to you, donkey dear, Jamie said. He lifted his hat the way his dad did to the ladies. So he is greeting the donkey, saying hello. Kit Kelly's donkey curled her lip. Silly donkey, Jamie said. What do you know? The sky was the color of his mother's pearl brooch, the one she wore on Sundays. Jamie marched down the middle of Main Street, past the shuttered shops. Barney the baker was a white blur behind his window. There was a whiff of bread baking. Nail turned her head toward the smell and drooled. Come on, Nail, Jamie said. Hubble the hen man trundled his wheelbarrow along the footpath. His eggs were piled in it, all brown and white. There he is, right here. Good morning to you, Jamie said. I see your hens are laying well. It's the sweet corn and the sweet talk I feed them, Humble said. Pick yourself an egg, Jamie. Jamie took a brown one off the top. It was still warm from the hen. Happy St. Pat's, Jamie said, and lifted his hat. He put the egg safe in his pocket. Jamie and Nell walked under the arches that spanned the street. Jamie wet the end of the flute with spit like Kevin did. Then he blew on it. And oh, the sounds he made. He puffed his cheeks. His fingers danced across the wind hills. Nell howled and put her tail down. Silly Nell, and what did she know? Mad old Mrs. Mulligan threw open her window and leaned out, save us all, she yelled. It's the terrible noise you're making, Jamie Donovan. She banged her window shut. That mad old Mrs. Mulligan, and what did she know? Mrs. Mulligan's big red rooster cock a doodle doo from the roof. His waddle rattled and Nell howled again. It was as good as a chorus to go with the music. Jamie was sorry there was no one to hear, 
but mad old Mrs. Mulligan. It was hard climbing up Acorn Hill with all Jamie's breath going into the music. He'd better save his strength for the marching. He put the flute over his shoulder and stepped out. Miss Mrs. Sims of the halfway up sweet shop leaned on her half door. You're the early ones, she said. Come on in, Jamie. You likely could use some refreshments. He's gonna get a treat. Let's turn the page. Jamie's head came to the level of Mrs. Sims' counter. Bottles of ginger ale stood on it. When he looked through them, everything was orange. Mrs. Sims gave him a bottle, all for himself. She gave him a bun with a cherry on the top, too. Nell let her tongue hang out and begged nicely. Mrs. Sims threw her two jelly beans. You heard the jelly beans. Nell gets two. Jamie ate his bun. He put the ginger ale bottle in his other pocket, the one that wasn't carrying the egg. Remember, he still had the egg. Here's a wee flag for you too, Mrs. Sims said. You can wave it later on at the parade. Jamie sniffed. Mrs. Sims was nice, but what did she know? Wasn't this the parade this very minute? And him in it? He took the flag anyway. We'll have to be getting on, Mrs. Sims, he said. We've a brave bit still to go. Aye, Mrs. Sims said. You'll be saving a good place for yourselves for the watching. Jamie nodded. Come on, Nell. The flute was getting awful heavy on Jamie's shoulder. He held the flag out in front of him. It was a very small flag, but it felt heavy too. Here it is right here. Don't be giving up now, Nell. Jamie puffed. We're nearly there. They turned the sweep of Acorn Hill and they were there. Jamie stopped. Look, Nell. They made it. They made it to the top. In front of them was the field where the bands would be and the stage for the Irish dancing. There was a green ribbon around the platform to keep the people off. Jamie crept under it. He sat right in the middle of the stage and Nell lay beside him. The sun was coming up. Jamie took the cap off his ginger ale and drank. He poured some in his hand for Nell. And all of them were saying I was too small, he said. What do they know? The sun jumped up like a firecracker from behind the mountain. A happy St. Pat's to you, son, Jamie shouted. The words made a great shimmer of sound in the emptiness. They're having their own parade. People said they were too small to go all the way to the top, but they made it. Jamie pushed Nell's head from his knees and stood up. The last drop of ginger ale was gone from the bottle. He stuck the green and yellow flag in it. Then he put the bottle right in the middle of the stage. See, he told Nell, that means we were here first. We did it, no matter what they said. Now we can go on home. It was easy going down Acorn Hill. There was nothing to it at all. The town was waking up. Some of the chimneys were smoking. The milk bottles had been let in, but Jamie's own house was still asleep. So he did all of this before people were starting to wake up. Only a few people were awake. He opened the back door. The clock tick-tocked. The turf ashes lay in their white drifts. Jamie took off his mother's coat. He set Hubble's egg on the table. He climbed in the rocker and Nell jumped beside him. He laid the flute across his knees and closed his eyes. Oh, the music he'd made. They'd not hear the likes of it all day and wait till they saw the flag, the mystery of it, the wondering there'd be. There were feet coming down the stairs, but his eyes were too heavy to lift and look. Ow! Ouch! Our Jamie! Kevin's voice was soft. Sound asleep, and with the sash and the flute and our dad's black hat? Are you sad now? 
and you're not big enough to walk in the parade. So he thinks he's sad, but really does he know he's already completed his own parade with the dog? Jamie kept his eyes closed and smiled. Silly Kevin, and what did he know? We know though, we know he made it to the top of Acorn Hill. The end. We finished.